you know, there was a lot of talk. He was one of the players, wasn't he, in the off-season last year that they couldn't get a deal done and was it going to be uh, a season of discontent and he posted one of his best years ever. And that is an interesting old oh, division, the South. I mean, the Bucks are going to be right in there. Baker, as you say, feels like he's found a spiritual home. Now, I, I guess the the flip side of this is, is it going to be Jekyll and Hyde Baker and there'll be a kind of reversion back or if it's more of the same and he's got Evans in play and lot of questions still about whether well Carolina have got a huge amount to develop but particularly Bryce Young Atlanta need a quarterback and Benny and I incidentally dropping uh, our first of many draft specials later on this week so uh, we'll tackle the quarterback question oh wow you're going this early we got where we got Ben in the house we have to go this early quite frankly because the man is (laughs) his brain is full it's exploding crazy the 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 news needs to come out we are going to go this early we're gonna crazy's the GM so you could only take two of those three Parsons has to be a lock right it has to be does he? I think it's... Oh, this is a tough this, one. This, this, this is the question I would ask you. If you had to grade those three players as um, in order of effectiveness, how would you rank them? Well, and replaceability as well, right? So I'd give it it's a deep hole receiver class in the draft. I know that's a big jump, right? Because CD Lamb's tried and tested. and But it's a, as Ben will tell us uh, on the show later this week with our uh, with the first of our, of our draft specials, it's a good receiver class. I think I think I would take Prescott and Parsons out of the three and deal Lamb. Yeah, I think I and I love CD Lamb, so it's not a knock on him, but yeah. So if you deal CD Lamb, Dak Prescott's best friend, who they've just broken records with together, and Dak hasn't signed a new deal going into the last year of his contract, do you then risk upsetting your the face of your franchise to such extent that he says, Look, I'm not signing any deal and he walks? Yeah, I mean it's a gamble. I didn't know there were Bezzies. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Graves is an insider, <laughs> Cowboys insider. But yeah, but I think I think if you're re-upping him, as you say, money talks, right? Sure. I mean, they, they, look, the walk is the guy. It's uh, I don't. He doesn't walk away from that franchise if they come. If there's a market improvement and a market improvement for Dallas is a deep playoff run, I don't think he's. Walking it's got to be the NFC Championship game. Mm. That that is the standard that you're looking at. Yeah, now, I guess um, it does for, for Dallas. Eagles are fascinating. Your old boy, Kellen Moore, in an offensive coordinator. Uh, all change, of course, because Sean Desai went mid-season last mm. season. So very interesting when you've got a team that, I guess, successful teams often see flux with coordinators because, you know, you roll deep in the playoffs. The Super Bowl, the coordinators are in vogue. This is a different kind of vibe in Philly. But maybe that it, flux is being overstated. For, for that very reason, that actually a team, an organization and Harry Roseman widely regarded as the best GM in the game. Obviously, Sirianni's got a lot of positive stuff going on there. I know there's the, it's the old stand-up days vibe, Gravesy. If you could have a terrible set for 15 minutes and you nail the last five and everybody remembers you fondly the other way around. I had plenty of them <laughs> where you start strong <laughs> and, then, and then it doesn't go quite to plan towards the end. What, of the what was that like now? <laughs> that was most that was most sets well without the starting strong bit <laughs> but that's kind of what the eagles had right they were oh they were looking yeah. fine and despite hurts he's not right but they're still winning and getting it done and then oh, it went a bit flat so looking at them in the context they're still the team you're most worried about obviously in the division they have to be right yeah yeah absolutely because again man for man on the roster they have the talent there especially on offense you know jalen hurts played i reckon at least half of last season Hurts. We'll never probably um, get to the bottom of, of how injured he was, but without doubt, it affects his game. You know, in Devonta Smith, in Dallas Goddard, um, in Brown at receiver, they've got star players. You know, it's top top five players in their position. Top, certainly top ten in the NFL. So they've got all the pieces. And what I will say about Kellen Moore, given his time in Dallas as the play caller and offensive coordinator, he knows how to draw up plays. The knock on Kellen Moore has always been, does he know how to play call? And by that, I mean, <laughs> can he draw up plays? That's got a drawback and, for an offensive call. Well, <laughs> indeed. Can he draw up plays and then lead defences to where he's got the killer play that they don't see coming and engineer a whole game? Now, the knock on Kellen Moore is that, you know, for the majority of his seasons, he had a top five um, offence, top five scoring offence, in Dallas, but by the time you got to December, defenses pretty knew, pretty much knew what was being thrown at them. And in the big games, the key moments, he couldn't deliver. Um, very gifted, very talented 
when it comes to drawing up plays, but is he an offensive coordinator that can call the game in the biggest moments? Mm. That's the risk that Philly take. It didn't work out for him um, in Los Angeles with the Chargers and the talent they had last year. Um, it's a big moment, this, for Kellen Moore. Um, and it's an important moment for the Philadelphia Eagles as well because, you know, they started out 10-1, and one, last year and then literally hit a brick wall and went no further in this um, through December. Um, and they don't want to waste the opportunities they've got with the talent that they've got on offense this time around. 